Hello and welcome to Naturally High, the channel that helps you grow your 4A, 4B and especially 4C hair to longer lengths. I often get asked about oiling or greasing the scalp and I normally sit down and write a reply but I think it would be best if I've just got one video that I can refer people to whenever they ask me about my thoughts on oiling or greasing the scalp and that's what this video is. I used various scientific journals for reference, though I mainly took the information from The Science of Black Hair by Audrey Davis Sivasovi. If you want to know more about any of the points I raise in this very brief video, then please do check out the studies I refer to during the video. I do try to make it clear um, who the authors were and what the name of the study so you can find it quite easily. I'd also encourage you to pause the screen when a new snippet from a study comes up just so that you can read the text yourself and see exactly what was being said in context. And I hope you find this video insightful. Do let me know below, do you like to grease your scalp? Why or why not? And what have your results been from greasing or not greasing? Our sebaceous glands, which are found not only on the scalp, but also on the skin, secrete a substance known as sebum, and this serves to keep our hair lubricated and moisturized. It contains fatty acids, glycerol, wax esters, and cholesterol. Sebum serves to condition the skin and prevent moisture loss. Scalp dryness is something I've noticed that a lot of black people in particular complain about and it usually has two main causes. The first cause of dry scalp is a lack of sebum secretion and this could be as a result of medication, genetic factors or a hormonal imbalance and that's something I'm not really going to talk about in this video but getting a balanced diet could help if this is where the problem stems from. Second cause is that many of us engage in practices that often lead to and exacerbate scalp dryness and this is what I'm going to talk about a bit more. As you may have observed from your own experience with your hair, our hair and our scalps do not secrete as much sebum as people of other ethnic groups. Perhaps you have a white friend or an Asian friend and you've touched their hair and you felt, oh, their hair's really greasy and they haven't really applied any products to it, but it just, it's naturally quite greasy. And ours isn't, and that's something that perhaps causes a lot of us to want to put oils and greases on our scalp in order to moisturize it. But when we apply products to our scalp, especially oils, and allow them to build up, then we can observe things like stunted growth and dry scalp. And why does this occur? Well, thick oils alter the scalp's optimal conditions by clogging our pores and thereby stunting growth. In addition, if our natural sebum is left on the scalp and allowed to accumulate, then it can also harden and form a thick wax which can sometimes clog the pores as well. This wax either acts alone or in combination with flaking scalp cells, additional products and oils to form a barrier to emerging follicles. When this happens on your face, you may notice spots or blemishes or zits or whatever you might want to call them. But when it happens on your scalp, hair is forced to grow through the blockage. And research has shown that such blockage can result in scalp itchiness, scalp dryness, inflammation of hair follicles, and even reduced quality of hair follicles. And we don't want any of that now, do we? Flaking is a natural process that our scalps undergo, but when the process is perturbed and the moisture level drops below optimal, then problems such as dandruff can arise. And this is why I say applying oils to your scalp or going weeks and weeks and weeks without washing your scalp especially can result in scalp itchiness, dryness, slow growth, and other scalp-related concerns. 